morning welcome back to the channel I've just turned up into um, Scarborough here to go through this um, job Matthew's been working on get some footage of inside he's moved along with the install I think he's got his first fixed all sorted and bonding going in uh, I'm gonna be getting on with the consumer unit and um, we'll show you some footage of that we're gonna try and demonstrate the new TIS multifunction tester we've got it came with a kit for the EV tester, that's primarily where I've got it, but I thought we'd have a little play around with it on this install so we can get used to it, see what it's like, so you might see some of that. Please subscribe and like the channel, it makes a massive difference if anyone is watching and you could do that, that would be brilliant. And otherwise enjoy, hope it's useful and any comments or feedback please let me know. Remember this is ongoing work, we're not demonstrating how we do stuff, we're just showing some of the finished product. And um, once it is all done, there'll be a final video and we'll run through the certificate and other bits and pieces. So enjoy, thanks. Okay, so I thought I'd drop on and do a, a PSC, PFC and the ZE measurements with this TIS MFT Pro. Uh, it's a new one for us. We've got it for the EV charging um, testing. We've got it in the kit bundle, but I thought I'd give it a run out with this. So you can see here we've got power on and um, we're testing across the live and neutral line and neutral first. So if I jump on and hold the test button down, make sure I get the probes on. There we go. And you can see there we've got 0 0.16 ohms between line and neutral and 1.44 kA. So I'll just swap over now to the earth uh, if we drop back on the old test set so this is now your ZE and your PFC if we test again should be pretty much the same so you see a little bit higher and that's 0 0.19 for the ZE and 1.2 k a again no issue with that. This is a TNS supply, so you'd expect a, a slight difference between the um, measurement across line and neutral and line and earth. So there's no problem there. Uh, you know, it's reading as you would really expect. Slightly lower value across line and neutral than we're finding on line and earth. And I suspect if we repeat that test a number of times, <clears throat> the values would probably narrow up a bit. Uh, and we can do that further down the line. I've just got the uh, SPD in outside. So, yeah, I thought we'd give it a quick test just to see where we're at, make sure everything's connected back up correctly and we're okay still with the, with the ZE's PSC and PFC when they're the same as before we started this work. So we know that we're in business there. The test readings out in the hall are the same as well, so we're all good. It's literally the other side of this wall, as you can see there. We're now going to make sure we run through the rest of the test process on this board. I'm not going to film it because it's a bit of a nightmare to hold onto the camera and um, get it done. But I will show you the test sheets when they're complete at the end of the job as well. And we'll have a little zip round and a chat with Matthew shortly. But I'll catch up with you again in a minute. This little test set is um, it's pretty impressive. I like the touch screen if you've not used one of these before. Uh, let's go back to the home. So you can see here you can do insulation resistance testing. And you've got your loop impedance tests, RCD tests, continuity. It will actually measure power quality. So you need um, the clamp as a, an additional extra that you can get, I believe. I've not tried that yet, but that's an interesting feature. Uh, you can measure leakage current, the environmental measurements. So you can put the probe in and it'll check the humidity and the temperature and, and things like that. So that's pre pretty neat. And again, fault drop, that's an interesting one. So when you've got your, your radials out and you're at the end of the line and you want to see exactly what the fault drop might be, you know, this is a fast and easy way to measure for that. So that's pretty good. Um, we'll give that one a try actually on this job and demonstrate that in action. Not uh, had that on the we used to, we usually use the megas and I don't believe that they do that in the, this kind of way anyway. And again, all the results are recordable onto an SD card. It links up to uh, your laptop. I think it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's not a little bad test of that one. So I'll do, feature it a bit more as we move through this job with more of the testing and um, show you getting some ZSs maybe in some of this um, vault drop. I'd like to have shown you the power quality, but I don't have the clamp, so I can't do that one. But yeah, check back in a bit.
Matthew's just doing his second fix in. Shows your finger, Matthew. And how did you do that? On the drill. On the drill. And why wasn't you wearing your gloves that you'd been provided by your employer? Because I'm an idiot. Yeah. So it's your own fault, there's no claim there. But yeah, Matthew's out his finger this morning because he's a bit of a pillock and he's been off to the local hospital to get his finger patched up. But like a brave warrior, he's here still working, second fixing. He's using these Klein strippers, uh, Klein, sorry, Nipex Twin Air strippers. Are they working all right in these back boxes, Matthew? Can you get it in and strip all right? Yeah, they're pretty good. They do work all right, do they? Okay, well that's interesting because a few people have said that they don't actually work in the back boxes um, for stripping your sockets, Matthew's saying that it does work. So we're going for the Schneider Liss Lissy range, if that's what you call it, the, a brushed and the chrome finish. I'll show you. I've got them all up here waiting to go in. I just want to strip. This is the dimmer, so you can see the finish that's going on there. So we're just waiting for the bonding to go off before we can get the final skim coat on. But we want to get a bit of power on in this front room, so we're just going to test this circuit off because we've got some drills to drill battery drills, battery drills to charge up. So we're just going to do that and again, I've got a temporary light switch on just for the time being because the bonding's still drying and I don't want to ruin the, um, the, the tarnish and the finish on the, on the new accessories. I'm not sure if there's an awful lot I can really show you down here. We're still waiting to get the second fix on. So we've got a bit of a patch to do over there. Matthew's bonded up down here. So we're all ready down there. Uh, that's a little cupboard where we've been storing the gear and yeah otherwise we'll just press along and once we've moved a bit further I'll have another zoom round and show you where we're up to and um, a bit more of that test set working. Welcome back things have moved on a little bit again so I thought we'd drop in and show you where we're up to. Uh, I've just got the cover on the consumer unit and we've dead tested the circuits that we've energized we've just run through the live tests and we're all good uh, I'll just quickly, quickly run through. So if I spin you around and zoom out a touch. So you can see we've got the Hager board on and it's all labelled up in there. So these now I've disconnected the wires into the circuits that aren't, um, aren't on but uh, they're open now. So this, the wires aren't actually in the RCBOs, they're disconnected and that's another benefit of the idents we put on there. So when we come back to reconnect them, although it's fairly obvious where they go, the um, numbering is on there just to help with that. So at the minute we've got the front room sockets on and the lights on for the front of the flat and the back bedroom just so it lights the place up um, a little bit so we can see what we're doing now as the nights are drawing in. There's no one else got keys to this flat, no one else with access until we're finished so I'm quite happy with that. It's all safe anyway, got blanks in. So that's the board. Still need the adapters, the elbows and end caps for the trunking. So we're going to have a double socket above here as well and then we're going to come out with the end cap into a wall mounted lamp as well so that's still to be done. I'm going to show you down this way first. So Matthew's got the bonding in today uh, before he sliced his hand open. Silly idiot. I've told him about three times to make sure he's got his gloves on and be careful and he obviously knows better and he's got himself a nasty little nick on his hand. Big brave boy rushed off to um, the local A&E so in Scarborough, Scarborough Hospital expecting stitches and whatever else and the lovely nurse cleaned it and put a plaster on for him. So he's a big brave boy. To be honest I didn't think he needed to go but you know he's been and he's been sorted out. So we've got the socket in down there. There's another one on the other wall but I can't show you because it's hidden behind the bed. As we come down this way we've not done anything in the bathroom yet because we're waiting for plumber to strip it. This is all um, first fixed but not energised so we've got the socket out there. And then over on this wall, so you see this is going to be a cupboard, um, but we've put these switches into the wall there because I'm not sure quite what they're doing. Um, it appears on the plan that it's a massive tall unit, but then it mentions something about wall cupboards and base units, so I don't know if they're going to be inside the cupboard or what. So we've recessed them into the wall, and the client isn't available, so we've just done that. If it needs adjusting, we can. Obviously, we've got the oven cable coming out there. We'll put a cooker outlet plate in the um, unit. And then up there we've got the wall lights and the flex out plate for the boiler because for some reason the boiler's getting mounted right up there. So we've got the, the isolator for it down here and um, yeah there's going to be a flex outlet plate up there for the boiler. 
I don't know why they're putting it up there, but that's where it's going apparently. And then on here, we've got a double socket on the right and that's going to have work top just in there. And then there's a breakfast bar comes out here. So we're going to have a USB double socket there. And then that's the hob induction hob isolator. Obviously these old sockets and switches are to be stripped out. And then the only room that we've got power on for the sockets is in here. And this is just so we can boil the kettle and charge battery drills up and stuff. So we've got socket in the corner and then the wall lights. Obviously these are all dead. There's no end power to them at the minute. And uh, yeah, we've got a couple of sockets down there. So I've left the fronts off for the time being because the bonding's not dried out. Uh, we've just got the backs on loose. But at least we can um, get the radio on. I'm just going to show you this neat. I don't know what happened there. I think a call came through and cut my camera off. So apologies about that. I'll try and edit it up nice so you can't tell. But I've just come to have a look at, look at the um, TI uh, MFT Pro. And I thought I'd show you the, the volt drop test on there. So if we uh, use the touch screen and go over to volt drop. You can see I've got it set to LN and 20 amps because that's the circuit we've got. So IN and I'll change that to 3% because we're on a socket circuit. So you've got 243 volts and if I hit the go button. It gives us 2.2% on the volt drop and 0.25 is the Z. Uh, it's just a nice little reference check on your, your radial circuits. Obviously your rings as well, you'd have to have a pretty big ring for your volt drop to start being an issue, but it's not impossible. This one's just quite a short radial, it just comes over into the front room, it's about 20 metres max. We've just got these short runs up behind the skirting boards, and this is end of line. So, you know, we expect to easily meet the volt drop, and it has done. So pop that off. So I hope you're finding these videos semi-useful, and... Um, We'll try and keep them coming. I've got to finish this job off still, which we will do. And as it progresses with the second fixing, we'll get some more footage next week. We've got the um, plasterers coming in after us. So the kitchen's gonna be left as it is for now. Obviously those circuits are disconnected, as I've said, so they can work safely in there. And we'll get the power on in the bedrooms in this front room. So there's plenty of plug-in points for the trades that'll be working in here. Once they're all sorted, we can come back and second fix in the kitchen. I'm led to believe there's a delay on that because of COVID, so the kitchen's not actually coming till the end of November. So we won't be able to show you the finished product for quite some time, but we'll get it to a point and we'll run through the paperwork. So obviously we can do the certificate for the cables we're leaving energized and um, we'll put the dead test results in for what we can test in the kitchen. We can at least um, mega out some of the cable in before other trades come and get to work. I don't know if other people do that, but I always do. So we know that what we've done's fine. I mean, as you've seen, we've put the bonding in ourselves anyway. It's all capped and covered in before that, but it's just extra peace of mind, isn't it? You never know when someone's fitting a kitchen, if the driver screw through something. If you come back to check it afterwards, if there's a, an issue, you can have a pretty good idea what's happened. So that's a little tip for you there. If you don't do that, it only takes five minutes, well worth the effort. So I think Matthew's enjoyed himself getting stuck into this one. He's um, wounded, as we mentioned today. These things happen, don't they? I mean, we've all done it slipped with a drill. He was he was only drilling a, a noggin in the wall in the kitchen and for whatever reason, I'm not exactly sure how he's done it, it slipped and bit his finger. But I've been telling him all morning, we've got the, uh, I mean I don't think it would have made a great deal of difference, but we've got the, the cut resistant gloves that we wear and he should have had them on. I'm always on his case about his PPE and he didn't have them on. And like I say, it would have probably cut his finger anyway. And big brave boy, he's got a plaster now. He thought he needed stitches, maybe surgery. Uh, He's lived to tell the tale with a plaster and uh, a nice bit of comfort from the nurse. So, yeah, he's doing well on this though, on the job itself. He's, um, he's not he's done the bonding himself. So obviously we don't need to worry too much about the finish on these because all these rooms are getting skimmed. But you know, it's a uh, nice bit of practice for him anyway. We don't do a lot of domestic as we said, so he's got a bit of bonding in there. It's all nice and tidy and uh, yeah. I'll try and piece this footage together into some sort of semi-entertaining video and we'll catch up with you again once we're finished, run through the paperwork and everything else that's been done on this job sometime next week. So catch up with you all soon. Thanks for watching and if you're enjoying them, please like, subscribe and share. It'd be great to get a few more subscribers on there. I think we're down at 30 odd still. So there's, there's a few people watching but not many. So thanks for those who are. I appreciate it. Catch you soon. So I hope you've enjoyed that. A uh, quick run through of where we are at the moment. It's coming along nicely. We'll drop back on with some more footage towards the um, middle of next week. 
and you can see the finished product. As I said, we'll go through the test sheets as well. I'll get those up on the laptop and run through them. You can see all the values we've got and um, you know, often they tell a tale. People don't often perform initial verification as perhaps they maybe should. So we'll, we'll run through that and explain everything that's been done with the installation and why we've got the test readings we have. So hopefully that'll be semi-interesting. Um, again, the apartment itself now, we've just got that socket circuit on in the front room for the moment and the lights are on. We're the only ones with access, there's no one else going in there. And when we've finished, um, it'll probably be Tuesday now, next week, uh, we will leave it nice and safe for all the other people coming in to do their bit afterwards. And um, yeah, we'll show you some more footage through the course of next week. Look out for it and please like, subscribe and share if you're enjoying them. Thank you very much. Thank you.